after we get familiar with the four factors of production, now we can start talking about the production possibility frontier, or the PPF. Uh, the first thing we could do is just look at the title of this model. Okay. Uh, there are three words. The first one is production. What does that mean? It means here in this model, we are just going to talk about supply. Talk about making stuff. Right? So please do not worry about demand. Okay? Oftentimes students will get confused about, you know, you want to produce this much of something. Would people on the market demand that much? Again, here, don't worry about it. Okay? The PPF will help us figure out how much we're supposed to produce without worrying about the demand. All right? The second word, possibility, means there could be many different ways we can organize our production. Okay? So we have many options instead of just one. The third word, frontier, means a borderline which separates one area from the other, right? In this case, we're talking about the borderline which separates what we could do from what we could not do, okay? With the borderline in front of us, we can also figure out what's the best we can do or the best case scenario, okay? Now, let's talk about the assumptions of the PPF. As we said before, this is the very first model uh, we introduced in this introductory course. So the first thing for a social science model is to make some assumptions because we're facing a very complicated world. So we want to hold other things constant when we talk about production in this case. Now, let's check out the assumptions we're going to make. Uh, we're, we're going to go through the assumptions very quickly. And towards the end, um, I will give you a numerical example to help you understand uh, what exactly these assumptions mean. All right, so the first assumption we're going to make is there are only two goods produced. Here on the slide, we said there are cars and potatoes, but you can come up with whatever you are interested in. Okay, iPhones, bottled waters, alcohol. A baseball match again whatever you want to put over there okay why we want to do two because in the real world we know that we have hundreds of thousands if not more uh, goods and services produced right um, but we cannot you know do that many so we choose only two to simplify our analysis we also believe that if we are familiar with two goods scenario, we can easily go from two to three, from three to four, from four to n. Okay? So the first assumption is only two goods produced. There's no third one. Okay? The next assumption is the total amount of each factor is fixed. Okay? In other words, in the previous video, we talked about the four factors of production, right? The total amount means economy-wide, um, these factors are fixed. In other words, we're trying to say that the size of the economy is fixed. Now, how could we make sense of that? Here, we're trying to say that at this moment, we are talking about the static 
um, situation of the economy. Static means this very moment. Okay. Of course, in the long run, for example, when we look at the labor, look at capital, they can increase or decrease. But at this very moment, it is okay to say that we won't expect a huge difference or change that will happen. Okay. So the total amount of each factor is fixed. The third assumption is only one variable factor, which is labor here, between the two industries. Now, two industries are the automaking industry and the potato making industries. Variable factor means as a firm, you can decide how many units of that factor you want to use. For example, here we're talking about labor. So you could decide as a, the owner of the factory you could decide how many workers you want to hire you could hire more or you could hire less so the amount of labor can be changed between these two uh, industries for example if the auto making factories want to expand their production they can hire more workers but in this case because the total amount of the uh, workers is fixed so they can only get extra workers from the potato industry. Vice versa, if the potato industry wants to produce more, they can hire more workers from the automakers. Okay. Uh, the very last assumption here is other factors uh, such as capital and technology are given in each industry. Okay. Because we said that we have at least four factors of production, and the previous assumption says only labor is variable. In other words, it can be changed between the two industries. That means the other factors cannot be changed even at the industry level. Okay. Now here, as I said, let's check out a numerical example. Okay, to see what exactly this means. I'm going to switch to the Microsoft whiteboard to give you this example. Okay. Now we're going to make a table here. Uh, we said that we have the car um, or the automaking industries, right? We also have the potato uh, industries. I'm sorry for the, the poor. Um, writing because of the whiteboard I think I'm still on the learning curve and uh, the third column here is a total the total means the economy wide how many units okay and um, so we're looking at uh, uh, two factors of production the first one is labor which um, by assumption is a variable input or factor the second one is a capital okay so L stands for labor K stands for capital. Why we use K instead of C? Because in economics, especially macroeconomics, C stands for consumption. Okay, so here we use K um, to represent capital. Now I'm gonna make up um, um, some numbers to keep the whole thing as simple as possible. Okay, now um, suppose that we get um, Let's see, 400 units of labor in the automaking industries and 800 units of uh, labor in potato industries. So the total would be 400 plus 800. So we get 1200 um, units of labor. Okay. And uh, for capital, again, that means machineries equipment and tools so for the automaking uh, industry uh, which is heavy industry use a lot of equipments let's do 1000 units of uh, capital okay again we could mean that 1000 pieces of machinery equipments okay and the potato industry let's do 500 
So the economy wide, we should have 1500 units of capital. Okay. Now here in front of you, uh, there are uh, six different numbers, right? Now, could you please figure out based upon the assumptions we just made, which numbers among the six are fixed? Let me say this one more time. Based upon the assumptions we just made, which numbers among these six are fixed? All right? Think about it. Again, we can talk about this during our online meeting.